Health care expenses, inflation, and outliving their money are the top three financial concerns that the majority of America's middle-income baby boomers have about retirement. That's according to a new study released by the Bankers Life and Casualty Company Center for a Secure Retirement. And my guest is uh, Scott Perry. He is president of uh, Bankers Life and Casualty Company. Thanks for taking the time. Scott, I'm sure you're pretty busy. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, it's my pleasure, Scott. Well, this, this kind of study here reflects uh, the kind of information that we've been hearing for a while about retirees. Um, let's start at the beginning. I mean, working in retirement is now sort of becoming the norm for Americans. And your study uh, suggests that 75 percent expect that their retirement will involve work in some form, and more than half say that, that they'll have to work because of financial reasons. And what is behind this? Well, Scott, uh, clearly the economic meltdown has had a huge impact, in particularly on middle-income boomers in terms of their expectations around retirement and their retirement savings. The Banker Center for Secure Retirement Study reports that 68% have experienced a decline in the value of their retirement accounts, and 30% of those have not seen any rebound in value. And in addition to that, obviously the housing bubble uh, burst didn't help. As you know, for many Americans, their home is their largest retirement asset. And currently, uh, you know, clearly it isn't worth as much as it used to be. So on top of that, you have this element uh, of longevity. People are living longer than ever. And according to our study, middle-income boomers are worried about outliving their money once they do finally retire. So, you know, clearly on the road to retirement, uh, boomers in particular, as they've been, you know, impacted by some of these recent uh, economic events, may have to consider working longer to build their nest egg for retirement. You know, which is sometimes easier said than done because a 61-year-old uh, looking for a gig, looking for a job, might not have as easy a time as somebody who was much younger. It certainly is, uh, presents a different set of challenges, and uh, somebody towards the end of their career uh, may have to consider alternatives uh, mm -hmm. in doing something different, uh, especially, uh, you know, many people will end up in the service sector that might have mm -hmm. been in manufacturing, for instance. Right. Correct. Uh, let's talk about life expectancy. You know, the length of retirement now is, well, it's off the charts. It's like another lifetime uh, for m many people. Um, that also increases uh, uh, health care expenses, long-term care expenses. How, how has this uh, study reflected that kind of information? Well, we saw, we've seen that the recession has definitely impacted, uh, you know, the way people spend, uh, spend and what they spend on health care. Uh, according to our study, nearly 95% of all middle-income boomers have just uh, concerns in general about uh, their finances into retirement. But the number one concern is focused around health care expenses, and 80% uh, express that as their number one concern. On top of that, Scott, many have taken relatively drastic measures to cut their health care costs, and I must say it's pretty alarming. Uh, the CSR study reports more than half, actually 55%, have actually said they've held off on going to the doctor. 26% are postponing an elective surgery, and 25% are changing to a less, less expensive health plan. And that, on the surface, may not be so bad as long as they know what they're getting into. Many of these less, uh, less expensive health plans uh, may require much more out-of-pocket than the individual may be prepared for. So you know, clearly boomers are spending less on all discretionary items uh, than they uh, today, more so than they did uh, during the re before the recession, things like dining out, vacations, holidays, birthdays. But health care has been an area that has been particularly uh, hard hit. See, now retirement was supposed to be a lot better than what you're talking about here, Scott. Right. <laughs> Um, I, I think your study also says that, that women have been particularly affected. Can, can you talk about that? Yes, uh, it does. The uh, center's study found that the middle-income women, uh, those between the ages of 47 and 65, tend to have more financial concerns about retirement than their counterparts, their male counterparts. 
And their top three concerns were inflation, uh, outliving their savings, and declines in the stock market. We also found, or the study also found, that women are more likely to push back their retirement age uh, as opposed to men, according to our study. They're going to rely more heavily on their financial decision to decide when is the right time to retire as opposed to their age. Mm -hmm. So they'll be looking to reach a certain level of accumulation and assets before they feel comfortable uh, you know, claiming retirement. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at the study and you've got uh, pre-retirees and, and boomers out there and well they've got essentially uh, I don't know maybe half to three quarters of what they had before the recession in, in retirement funds and they're you know they're looking to somehow protect what they have left and there's I, I, I'm getting even a sort of a paralysis uh, about what to do because the equity markets are kind of crazy right now and 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 I mean what you know, and, and you've got now, oh, I don't think I have enough money here. How can I, you know, I, I've got to retire now. Well, what's, what are some of the answers or suggestions that, that you could have for people? That's a great point. I, I think the first thing, kind of the general message uh, that I pull out of our study is uh, that no matter where you are in the process, uh, the, the adequate planning and saving beginning right now is the best defense against unexpected financial burdens that will come later in life. Uh, and, you know, whether that horizon is 5 or 15 years, and as we said, with many people making the choice to work longer, it, it may be postponed. There are several things, uh, specific things, that people should be thinking about doing right now. The first, uh, and this is a step that a lot of time is overlooked, uh, but it's a critical one because it establishes uh, the path for, for everything from that point on, is Get very uh, clear about your goals and make sure those goals for retirement are realistic uh, and, and that those expectations match uh, the uh, amount of money you either have or you believe you will have uh, to support the lifestyle, the retirement lifestyle that you want. So envision uh, what you want your lifestyle to be, but make sure that those expectations are realistic. Mm -hmm. The next is take full advantage of whatever vehicles you have uh, through your employer uh, if you're still working. So whether you whether that's a 401k or you're in the uh, not-for-profit world and you have the uh, 403b plans available, make sure you contribute at least up to the amount that your employer matches, uh, or you know ideally to the maximum that's allowed. Next. Plan for risks. Uh, people spend a lot of time planning and for on the accumulation phase, um, and as important as that is, uh, if you're not properly protected from unexpected risks, uh, that could, uh, you know, erode those savings faster than you had expected to. So the three most important financial risks to consider planning against are long-term care risks, inflation and longevity, again, mm -hmm. outliving your money or living longer than you might have uh, otherwise expected to live. Mm -hmm. That, you know, also practice healthy living. You've done all this work uh, to accumulate assets, to protect against risks. Make sure that you've taken care of yourself physically now so that you can fully enjoy all the fruits of your labor during your retirement years. And lastly, and I, you know, this is, I, I can't say this enough or, or clear enough, uh, no matter whether you have uh, $5,000 or $500,000, retirement planning is very complex. Uh, seek advice from a retire retirement planning professional. Uh, a professional advisor can help create a financial plan that supports your, re re your vision for retirement. And whether uh, y you have, again, five or fifty or $100,000, $300,000, um, don't assume that uh, one uh, advice is too expensive, mm -hmm. and don't also assume that uh, you don't have enough for somebody uh, to want to work with you. Uh, many advisors uh, will provide free advice and uh, 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 will work with you without a, uh, necessarily a fee. Uh, and again, whether they're willing to work with you wherever you are in the spectrum, usually the only requirement they have is that uh, you're you're going to engage in the process and you're willing to commit to the plan that they work with you to put forth. 
Very well put. Um, this would be such a natural place to close. I'm going to ask you one more question here. Talking to the advisors right, right now, because obviously the work that they're doing is changing. Uh, they have to look at the, you know, the, the, the whole picture differently. Um, with the consumer in mind, there's, there's a difference between a financial planner and a retirement planner. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because, I mean, the person who has a financial planner right now might feel that they're in the right hands, but there may be something that they're missing, perhaps? Perhaps, uh, absolutely. Uh, most financial planners are, and it's not necessarily wrong, but their focus is on the accumulation phase mm -hmm. or, or on the income payout phase and probably less focus on protecting against some of the risks uh, that, uh, I I an individual may incur, and is especially some of the healthcare related risks. A lot of the financial uh, retirement planners are more skilled and trained on uh, the, the financial aspects of retirement, not so much uh, trained on the healthcare related aspects and of retirement, and particularly, particularly those that involve protecting against risks, as I mentioned, like. Uh, an extended stay in a nursing home or home health care stay, or some of the gaps that exist between uh, Medicare and what an individual might have to pay out of pocket. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate your time. Again, my guest has been uh, Scott Perry. He is the president of Bankers Life and Casualty Company, and fortunately, he finds time to talk to us here on Annuity News Now. Uh, Scott, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you. You're very welcome, Scott. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks. Thank you for watching.